This is the one month S&P 500 reading for May 2022. It's currently April 17th, 2022. The overall theme and behavior for the month is three pokes through resistance followed by a sharp decline um, or profit taking decline uh, out of an overbought uh, crest or high. Behavior out of the high is gonna be a sharp decline with increasing momentum as we move forward in time. Behavior into the low is going to be sideways fluctuation with a downward trend. Looks like at least one of the, the major highs and one of the major lows for the month of May will be within close time proximity to each other. So we start off the month with a month's high. There's a month correlator here uh, for the first day of the month, which is the second, the first trading day of the month, which is the second. And we have a sharp decline with a high at the start of the day and a, and a sharp decline from that high down to a low at the end of the day. Uh, Tuesday the 3rd, we have um, a male leader highlighted, a male leader of nations. Um, something significant relative to the rest of the month takes place involving a male leader of nations. Um, on the 4th, Wednesday the 4th, we have, excuse me, let me back up, we have two trade opportunities as well um, on the 2nd. So there's a day trade, looks like there's a trade trade in there. Um, we have two, tr we have a trade opportunity on, on the 4th, Wednesday the 4th. Uh, it looks like two local lows and we push higher out of out of one of the at least one of those lows, out of both of those lows we move higher so um pretty bullish day there on, on wednesday the fourth uh there's a local high correlator here uh for the thursday the fifth and another trade opportunity so likely what i see happening is if i i buy calls here low in the day on the fourth and then sell them towards the uh, towards wherever we end up here uh, after the rally, probably at the beginning of the day, based on the fact that it's the queen of discs, which means we revisit a support level, which was a good opportunity. So we probably push higher, start the day higher here. Looks like we have the week's high is either on the week's high looks like it's at the end of the week here. Um, we have sideways rotation with a, um, a no move move to the upside. Um, there is a sh there is at least one sharp decline in the midst of this day within the rotation. And we're talking about the sixth, uh, if I didn't mention. Um, and we have a high towards the end of the day. A day's high towards the end of the day, to be clear. And we have near near close to overbought territory. Uh, we encounter that on uh, Monday the, the 9th, near bought over territory on the RSI, near overbought territory on the RSI. And we sell from, uh, pro uh, there's a profit taking decline and a sharp decline through support level, uh, through an important support level um, on the 9th. We have sideways, uh, sideways S formation between a resistance and a support that takes place on, on the 10th. So we move the 
high on on uh, let's the high on the ninth is lower than the high on the sixth. The high on the tenth is a little bit higher than the high on the ninth, but not by much. Um, both the, the high on the ninth and the high on the tenth take place towards the ends of the day. Um, on the tenth. In the midst of that sideways decline, which is or sideways uh, S formation, it'll be like a decline, incline, decline um, within the same range. Um, there's a push out of that the following day from a month's low. Oh, a trade opportunity. Excuse me, a trade opportunity on the tenth as well, and a local low on the and the, on uh, the tenth as well. Now on the on the eleventh we have. Uh, successful we successfully create support out of old resistance so we turn new uh, old resistance into new support um, and there's a low correlator for the month there so we like we have a low um, we, we have our first kind of like bottom out there uh, and then we push much higher the following day there's like a gap higher uh, and a piece of news at the end but okay but there's a piece of move so we move much higher like there's a big move to the upside on the 12th big big move to the upside on the 12th and then there's a uh, almost as equal if not equal move to the downside the following day pretty pretty de strong decline the following day in the middle in between the 12th and the 13th there's an important piece of news relative to the rest of the month an important piece of news that's highlighted um and then we go from that bullish really bullish day on the 12th out of a local low um, to a really bearish day on the 13th. Friday the 13th is an ugly 13th um, out of a local high. Um, yeah, sharp, sharp decline here, guys. We've got the cr a, correlator, a correlation with the cruelty card, an association with the cru cruelty card and ruin. I mean, this is a rough day. Okay, so we have and there's a trade opportunity on the 13th as well. Two trade opportunities on the 16th. Monday the 16th it looks like. We have a bottom, so we decline out of 13. And we come out of a notable bottom on the chart. When looking at daily candlesticks, we come out of a notable bottom and we present. Um, A lot of volatility here, it looks like. A lot of volatility on this third week of May. So an important trough or, or low or bottom here on the, on the 16th. And then it looks like we also move higher because there's a high correlator. We have a day trade here, two trade opportunities. So probably like in the morning, we want to buy calls. Um, So if we open higher, let's say if we open higher on the 16th than we did, than we we closed on the 13th, then it's going to be buy puts. Whereas if we open lower, like we gap down from the 13th into the 16th, I'll buy calls to sell probably at the end of the day. But if it's the other way around and we, we open a little bit higher than we closed on the 13th, then I'll be buying puts and that won't be for like, that won't be like to sell at the end of the day that'll be to hold for a little bit um we have uh, an important relative to the rest of the month and uh, an, uh, an important uh price level is highlighted on the 17th something to take note of there's a low correlator in there too which is why i say there's probably some like volatility here um in the midst of this week we go from a high a month's high correlator to a month's low correlator then on the 18th back to a month's high and the 19th back to a month's low um i think we probably see our second our first high was there we see our second high here
Huh. No matter of fact. Well, we have a uh, relatively bullish day. Big move to the upside on the, the 18th, but that looks to be out of a low. There's a tested, an important test of uh, resistance, something that we were counting on doesn't, doesn't come to fruition. And as a result, uh, market tanks. And in the midst of that decline, there's an opportunity to open up some uh, calls. A lot, this is a very ugly week to interpret. It's like so, so much going on here. But I will say that I want to be bearish coming out of this because we have the, uni uh, the universal hexagram on the 20th. My sense is that a lot of volatility. We test the, that we have a first or second poke here or both. Like, if this isn't a poke and it's just a decline, then this would be the first poke and the second poke, the third poke, and then, hmm, then we would fall sharply. A lot going on, guys. Um, so, uh, universal hexagram on the 20th. that's generally an opportunity like a price level that when we have our next correction will fall will fall through that price level so something to stay, take note of on the 20th here um, there's three crisscrosses through the same price level confirming a bullish trend and then the following day on that Monday yeah okay so we go down pretty we 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 go down on I mean there's some some volatility but it's a down week the third week uh, Possibly with like there being a little peak here on the 19th, and then we and then a good opportunity there to drop uh, to buy, buy puts before the drop there. Um, There's a lot going on here, guys. I would say it's it's pretty difficult for me to determine exactly what's going on in this third week here without getting into the dailies in a little bit more detail, which I have yet to do. So uh, look out for some updates regarding this week in the next few days. Um, that's the week of the 16th to the 20th. Day on Monday, the 23rd. Um, Looks like we drop again early morning on the 24th, but from there we move higher again. We have two trade opportunities on the 25th. It looks like a day trade opportunity. Um, so uh, like an opportunity there to open up a call somewhere on that day and then sell it near a support level or a near a resistance level that we expect to break through, but we don't. We break down through that uh, support, uh, we break down through that, after that hitting that resistance, we break down through diagonal support on the 26th. Um, there's like a little bit of a rally maybe in the early morning uh, into the day, but we break down through that um, gap down on the 27th with a push higher through, even though it seems like we would have an awful day, we push higher through resistance. Um, on the 30th, we have the, the uh, day off. It's 
Memorial Day, and then the 31st, we have a move higher through a resistance, followed by just staying above it briefly, creating a peak and breaking back down towards it. Um, looks like maybe at the end of the day is that peak, and then we break down back down towards it afterwards. A lot of volatility, increasing volatility towards as we move forward into the month. This is the sneak preview for uh, June. June will be a volatile month. When I look at the one year. Yeah, so we have a high, the year's high somewhere in, towards, somewhere in late May, possibly uh, the end of May into early, somewhere here. The month, the year's, the year's high is in May, June, May, June. Um, and that's an opportunity too, because we have a sharp, we have a, a, a year's low following it in July and August. Um, We, pro we have the we have a good high here that like on the 12th the 11th 12th there's a really notable high there guys and I mean this is gonna be a memorable week I'll get into more detail on that later on like I said guys the 16th to the 20th will there'll be a like this will this will stand out this week will stand out actually this week and then into like the first few days uh, the first couple of days of, of the next week. So like from the 16th to the 24th, this whole area is really going to stand out be pretty uh, sensational in some regard. We'll look into it deeper. Um, something takes place over the weekend of Memorial Day, something important to take note of and to, to um, pay attention to. Looks like Sunday. So my trade opportunity, uh, the, my trade opportunity on the fifth is also going to be a uh, opportunity to buy some calls. Actually, I'm, 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 let me back up and scratch that last thing that I said. I want to look in more detail on it. But this is the overview for the S&P 500 to get into more in depth. Like this, the sequence of events will be right on target. There may be a little, a little variation as to the days. Like it may be like off a little bit by like a day or so in some in some places um, but the sequence of events will remain the same um, and we get into the dailies the, the one day S&P 500 readings by the hour and that's where we really get into it so uh, check that those videos out on uh, YouTube as well guys all this S&P 500 stuff is free we're, we're averaging 98% accuracy you guys check it out it's very helpful there's people making a lot of money uh, utilizing this information and in, in tandem with uh, technical analysis um, and let me know what you guys think. Look out for uh, for a gold reading, a Bitcoin reading. We're gonna do a uh, uh, we're gonna do a bunch of cryptos. We're gonna do some stocks. Um, you'll see a lot of stuff coming out in May and June. Um, so stay tuned, guys. And if you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button. It's very helpful for us, guys. Um, we're about uh, a third of the way to monetization, which is pretty exciting for YouTube. We didn't start that long ago. Um, so hit that subscribe button, guys, and spread the word. Tell your friends. Help them out. People, There's a lot of people out there that could be making money, that should be making money, and for whatever reason they're not. Let's help these people. Spread the word. Pay it forward. Hit that like button, and I'll see you guys later. Blessings.